Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul, and this is the FileMaker 19.1.2 Updater Overview. So what's new in FileMaker 19.1.2? Well, first off, this update also includes 19.1.1, which was not released. They've been rolled together. Additionally, if you expand the description of this video, the different sections have links so you can jump to what interests you. JavaScript enabled add-ons are our big win for this update. It's drag and drop with some pretty cool functionality. We're gonna go over each one very briefly and we'll follow that up with individual videos. Apex Blue theme is a new theme. It's also the default theme and the JavaScript add-ons use that theme. We have the quick start experience. This is for Mac OS only when using English. It is in preview mode, so take that into consideration. Authentication via Microsoft Active Directory Federated Services, and this update in particular applies to Linux servers. And we're not gonna cover that in a lot of detail. We have two new functions for obtaining locale elements, both system and file, and this outputs in JSON. What's changed? Well, the big change is in JavaScript. Our function FileMaker Perform Script is now FileMaker Perform Script with option. The old one still does exist because you need it for WebDirect, but it now defaults to option zero, which is continue. That's different behavior than previous versions, which is a reason you're gonna wanna update. The configure NFC reading script step, the near field communication, like the watches and phones and devices, now has an option to output in JSON and sorting records on the host. We'll sort the records on the host rather than downloading them, and if the host is busy, it will do it the old way. What else? Well, we'll address issues, known issues, and a single add on issue. We'll cover those at the end. With FileMaker 19, Claris has changed how they roll out features. Used to be we'd only get them at a major version number, but now we're gonna get new features and major changes with potentially every new update that comes out. And that brings with it a whole new set of issues, like we'll see with the JavaScript function. Well, they did give us one new tool to help deal with that. Rather than choosing uh, the minimum version allowed to open this file in our file options, um, we used to pick that from a drop-down list, but now we can manually type it in. So I could type in 19.1 here, and 19.0 um, would not function with this file. And in case you're curious, if you do uh, make a typo and you put 19.5, which doesn't exist, um, FileMaker's not going to let you make that mistake and permanently lock yourself out of your file. Adding a JavaScript enabled add-on is as simple as going into layout mode, uh, opening up our pane and showing add-ons, clicking the plus sign. And notice our JavaScript add-ons are colored as to where our other ones are not. And we pick it and we say choose. Now it's at this point that the schema, the scripts, the custom functions, all that stuff got added. And then it's just a matter of dragging it onto this layout. Now when I go into browse mode, the sample data came with it. And if I want to get rid of it, I can go back into layout mode, right click on it, and uninstall. So our JavaScript add-ons, we have nine of them. Let's run through them real quick. We've got the uh, activity timeline. It's kind of a social media Twitter type organization of data. And if you double click on it, you can edit. Next up is a barcode. And we can type in the information in this field. And when we click the button, it will generate the code. And this is a image file stored in a container. So we could do whatever it is we want with that. And we have a calendar. And this is a full calendar. This works the way you would expect. We have a day mode, a week mode, month mode. Click in here and say, let's give it a style, a close. And we can grab that event and extend it. We can go to month view. We can jump through the months. And we also have the plus to make a new event. We have a calendar heat map. 
which shows us um, frequency of events. So here I have three events, and I can open it up, and I can see what they are. We have a Kanban board, which uh, allows you to change the status by dragging and dropping records. You can also change their order. Likewise, if you open it up, you can go into the status here, and it will jump to the other side. We also have the photo gallery. This takes your images and puts them in this nice layout. When you double click on it, you can um, change the scaling. And then we have the rich text editor, which uh, whatever you type in here is reflected in this field, stored in HTML. And um, I currently have this on advanced, but it comes in as basic. So we would type in test and we could, you know, remove the bold and the italics. We could uh, remove the list and that's what you get. Next up is the simple chart, which this is using sample data. When you hover, you get the number and the color and all this can be, this actually has a lot of settings. Um, I'm using the minimal amount of setup. And then we have the timer. Now this is a button with a few fields. When you click the button, it will um, track the amount of time and add it to the time logged right here. Now this comes in as a single record solution, but with some uh, modifications, this could also keep track of the different sessions as well. Not a lot need be said about Apex Blue. It's simply our new default theme. As you can see, it's more modern, it's larger, simplified. It replaces Enlightened. If you're going to be making um, JavaScript enabled add-ons, they need to be made in this theme. If you'd like to see the preview of the Quick Start experience, you'll need to be running a Macintosh in English, and you need to go into your preferences as a FileMaker and make sure that your Use Advanced Tools is disabled. Then you need to restart FileMaker and create a blank document. Click Add, we'll create a new field, and I'll make it text. Close. And then we'll make a new layout, and we'll select Mobile, and we'll make it for an iPhone 8. And we'll add a couple fields here. Now, when we're all done, so we can save this, but we can't save it and open it back up. This is a one-shot deal. And then you click Done and it's gonna give you that warning. And now we've got our layout. And to make any further changes, I need to go into layout. With this update, you can now open a custom app hosted by FileMaker Server for Linux, which has been configured to authenticate via Active Directory Federated Services. If this interests you, check the description of this video. I'm gonna provide a link to this article by Wim Decourt over at Saliant. It's got some good resources and good links to answer your questions. In this update, we get two new functions that give us a plethora of information about the locality of where our file is hosted and the system that is opening the file. It produces JSON, as can be seen over here. This is my system in America. And here's some examples. This is the version number. It's not a bad idea to include that if you're gonna use this. If that number changes, it indicates this structure has changed. Here is the 12-hour format information included in the notes. It can provide the currency symbol of the locality. This is the spelling of the fourth day of the week. And this down here is returning the order that you present the date. There's a lot of useful information provided in here. So a change in this version is the JavaScript function FileMaker perform script got an update so it can now accept an option parameter. We've had options in our FileMaker scripts for a long time, but we only had four options. The JavaScript function has a potential of six values. And that is in part because the previous function FileMaker perform script would default to option five, which was interrupt. And that comes with a strong caution against using that now. Because a script can change the current context, for example, go to a different layout, modify records, and change global variables, 
The interrupt script could resume in a different context and produce unexpected results. And it's for that reason that both the perform script with option and perform script now both default to zero. Also, perform script with option is not available in WebDirect, so you need to continue to use the previous perform script function. The configure NFC reading script step can now output in JSON format. That's the near field communication. And if you select format result as JSON and your calculation results in a non-zero value, you'll get JSON. If it is zero or empty, you're going to get a return delimited list as you did in FileMaker 19.0. When JSON is enabled, this is the format that's returned as a script parameter when an NFC tag is read. For each record read from an NFC tag, the payloads array contains a JSON object. The value of the primary key is the payload. Secondary may contain additional information. I will include a link to the updater release notes, and you can scroll down to the addressed issues and known issues section to read that for yourself. Additionally, you can go to this link to download the standalone updater. Be sure to subscribe if you'd like to get updates when our new videos come out. We here at Productive Computing are a Claris partner firm specializing in FileMaker solutions and services. That includes things like FileMaker custom development, FileMaker hosting, FileMaker licensing, plugins, and education by way of ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. If you expand the description below, there are multiple ways to reach out and contact us. Also, remember that liking a video is a way of letting us know that this content is valuable to you. So until next time, take care.